Okay, so uh, let's look at an example of PCA in action. Uh, so there is a, um, if, if you're curious, there is a MATLAB, there's a, there a demo in MATLAB for this, so you can download it and play, to, play with it around on your own. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not examinable in any way, so it's just for your own um, information. <clears throat> so um, PCA, and in general techniques like PCA, um, they're high dimensional, so it's often hard to visualize what's going on. But in some cases, in some domains, you can actually make really nice visualizations. And uh, one visualization that we're going to do today is uh, eigenfaces. Right? So, um, so basically, uh, this is doing PCA on, uh, on bitmap images of human faces. Right? So you have a data set. Um, every bitmap here is a data instance, right? and what we're going to do is we're going to do PCA on these instances and see what it looks like. So uh, here's one instance, uh, it's that guy right there, and uh, we're assuming that it's a k by k bit bitmap. It doesn't have to be square, it's just k by k makes it, makes it easy to uh, explain. So it's k by k and each uh, it's grayscale as well, so each pixel here is just a number between 0 and 255, just, just the level of gray that you have. So, and what I'm assuming is that this is the first pixel, second pixel, and this is the last pixel. Okay, so um, now you can take this data, so this is a bitmap, uh, to do anything with it we have to form a single vector out of it, right? because um, all of our instances must be represented by vectors of attributes. So uh, the way we can do that uh, in this case is we can just unfold the bitmap into one big vector. So I'm going to take the first row of pixels, right, first row, and that they're going to become the first k attributes in my vector. Second row becomes the second k, and then the last row becomes the last k. Um, attributes. So you end up with a vector that has k squared dimensions, right? k rows of k uh, attributes um, each. So that's one, that, 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 that's a lot of dimensions, right? But that's, that's, that's not a big deal. <clears throat> now, once I've done that, uh, I, uh, here I'm doing it for one instance, you do it for every instance in your data set, and uh, after doing that, you end up with a matrix w which has uh, k squared rows, so these are our new attributes, the pixels, right? and you have n, uh, uh, n columns that represents the, um, <clears throat> the individual instances, the, the x's in the data. So uh, that's our matrix, and we can take this and do PCA on it. Right? So uh, how do we do it? Well, we take these guys, we subtract the mean, so the mean is kind of like the, the vector for the average looking face, Right? So you end up with differences from the mean, compute the covariance matrix, look for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Right. So you do PCA, and at the end of PCA, you will pick a certain number m of these new dimensions, of these eigenvectors with the highest, um, with the highest eigenvalues, the eigenvectors that span the most variance in this uh, matrix. And what's neat and really cool about these is uh, you're going to have m columns, so these are new dimensions, uh, but each column is k squared dimensional. So each column basically corresponds to the original positions of pixels in a bitmap. Because right? remember, the attributes here, they were just pixels. I had k squared of them. So after doing PCA, I still have k squared. Each one of the eigenvectors has k square dimensions, as many as pixels. And these are going to be numbers, so we can take them and plot them and see what they look like. Right. So how, how you do it, you take one of the eigenvectors, it has k squared numbers, and you fold it back into a bitmap. So you take the first k attributes, make it into a row of pixels, second k, make it into the second row of pixels, all the way down to the end. You do it and you end up with something like that, right? which uh, looks kind of like well, well, it looks kind of interesting. Right? So, uh, uh, it certainly has some recognizable features, and that's why that's why this is popular. It's because it's one of the few ways in which you can see what the technique is doing. Right? For many other domains, you can't do anything like that. So you don't. It's doing something, but you can't see it. Here, you can actually see what it's doing. Right? So what is it? Uh, it certainly doesn't look like an average face of any kind. 
right? And it isn't. It shouldn't be an average phase because remember, the first step of PCA, you subtract the mean. Right? So uh, we have subtracted the average phase. Now, what is it? Uh, so this is the this is the first principal component. What it's showing is it's showing the most prominent deviations from the mean in this data set. So the mean is a prototypical average looking face. So you have average all of those guys, girls, boys, mustache, doesn't matter, um, glasses. Uh, and then this is the dimension along which people seem to vary the most from the mean. And what is it showing you? Well, basically, you know, my reading of this is most variation is in the hair. That's, 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 what, that's where you have the... That's where you have the highest numbers, right? So all people have a nose and lips and eyes, but uh, they, they, they do differ in terms of hair. That seems to be the greatest dimension of variance. Right? And if you repeat that, uh, you end up with, so these are, these are the eigenvectors. So these are typical variations, right? So the greatest ones there, and then you get other things. So what is it capturing? It's capturing lots of things. It's capturing variations in the hair. It's ca capturing variations in the eyes. It's capturing variations in the position of the face, right? Because not all faces are uh, looking straight at you. Um, so things like that, where you have one side of it uh, brightened up, that's the, that's the tilt. Uh, that's the turn of the head. <clears throat> So uh, it's kind of neat in the sense that you can you can get a sense for what these eigenvectors are, and that's that's really what they are. Right? So how can you use it? Well, uh, you can use it to represent faces in a better way, right? So you can take our face, and we can see how we can represent it in this new uh, low-dimensional space. So that's the original guy. These are the eigenvectors. Um, so uh, the way we represent this face is by doing a dot product between this guy and each one of the eigenvectors. Uh, dot product, again, remember, we are unfolding each face into a big k-square dimensional vector. Unfolding each, each eigenvector is a k-square dimensional vector, so just do a dot product between them. And, um, and that allows you to create, uh, to decompose a face into these eigenfaces, right? You say, so this guy is the mean, whatever the mean face is, plus some component, uh, plus some amount of the first uh, eigenface plus some amount of the second eigenface, some amount of the third one, and so on and so forth. So uh, now the, the coefficients here are completely made up, right? So like uh, they're not real. Uh, but in general, you will have numbers. Uh, you will have coordinates along these um, um, eigenvectors. So they can be positive or negative. They can be uh, fractional or, or anything of the sort, right? So. <coughs> um, uh, and of course, uh, you can you can keep multiplying. Uh, so you can you can take either the first one or the first two or the first three. You can take as many as you want as a representation. And as you change the number of eigenvectors that you put into that equation, you get an interesting progression of faces, right? So uh, I believe that is just the mean face, or maybe it's the mean face plus the first one, right? So let, let's assume that that's the mean face, right? So. Uh, if you if, if you don't if you don't take any of these guys, then this is just the average looking face. You add the first eigenvector, eigenface, you get something like that. Add the third one, something like that. And as you keep doing that, eventually you'll recover the original uh, bitmap. Yes. Why would you represent um, negative coefficients multiplied by eigenvalues if all of the uh, attributes are numbers from zero to one? I'm sorry. Can you ask again? If, if all of the Image representations are pixel values between zero and two. Right? Yes. Then the coefficients that are negative also lead to. Yes. Yeah. So if you have if you have negative coefficients, uh, then then you could have uh, unrealistic results. Yes. Okay. So now this will only happen if you truncate at fewer than d eigenvectors. If you take the if you take the sum all the way to the end, you should recover the original bitmap or be really, really close to it. But if you truncate, you could end up with negative pixel values. And then how you visualize them is really up to you. Because PCA doesn't know that these are pixels. Remember, PCA doesn't know that these are photographs. As far as it's concerned, it just has numbers. And positive numbers are as good as negative numbers. So uh, it, uh, it, it can easily come up with negative uh, pixel values. And then it's up to you how you... Replacing with negative uh, negatives with the means, um, I don't know. You could try. Uh, so uh, it's uh, 
you know, the, the first thing that I would do is I would, you know, truncate them at zero, right? And the next thing that I would do is I would just do a min-max normalization and see what that gives you. Right? But, but, you know, taking the mean, maybe, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, here's what you get. This, this is basically a projection. As you use more and more eigenvectors in this decomposition, you're going to end up with a face that looks more and more like, uh, like, the, original, like the original guy. Uh, so this is not adding one, this is adding basically all of them, so this is not a linear progression. Um, now, why is, this, why is this neat and why is this interesting? Uh, this is neat because by taking the first few eigenvectors, you can get a pretty close representation of the guy, right? Uh, compared with, so suppose, you know, assume that this corresponds to maybe 20 eigenvectors, right? So, this means you're using 20 numbers to represent this bitmap, which looks kind of like the original guy. Now, if I told you that you can use 20 pixels, would you be able to represent him nearly as well? No, there's no way to pick 20 pixels that's going to look anything like that. But here, you're effectively picking 20 numbers, 20 mixture coefficients, 20 coordinates. Right? So, one really nice way to use this is you can use this for massive compression of the data, right? So as long as, you know, um, you have two communicating parties, if they all have access to the same eigenvectors, all they need to send between each other are just the projection coordinates, and they can transmit arbitrary uh, faces between them, right? So it's massive, massive reduction in the size of data, and it's nice because it takes up less space. It's also really nice because now your classifiers or your regression systems operate in this low dimensional space. So they have plenty of redundancy to grab onto and learn a better, uh, better hyperplane. <clears throat> I'm sorry? Uh, I don't have specific examples, but yes. Um, okay, so uh, you can use it for things like face similarity, right? So uh, you could take two faces and you could do uh, a similarity in terms of pixel values or you could do similarity in terms of eigenvectors. And if you do it in terms of eigenvectors, what's nice is you end up with a similarity function that's largely insensitive to lighting, orientation of the face, and some facial features. So you can still recognize people even if they tilt their head. Uh, and do it, do, it, do it with a reasonable amount of accuracy. Uh, now, one interesting downside is when you are projecting to the eigenfaces, you are representing any input, any bitmap that comes in, in terms of these eigenfaces, whether it makes sense or not. Right? So if, uh, if you take those eigenfaces that you had previously, right? if you take this guy, which will... I don't know if I don't remember if that was in the data set or not. So he looks like that. His recon his eigenface reconstruction. This guy looks like that, like pretty, pretty similar guys. Uh, but you can also take things which are not faces at all, and PCA will happily represent them in terms of faces that were in your uh, data set. Now, why does this happen? So, yes, this is certainly a face, but this is not a very good representation of that face. So why is it doing that? Why is it putting a, a human face on a rat? And that's because uh, those human eigenfaces are the new dimensions, right? Those are the only things that it can represent, right? You don't have dimensions that look anything like rats or cars, right? You only have dimensions that look like the faces in that data set. So if you take an example that is completely unlike anything that you've seen in your training data, yeah, you're going to get a bizarre uh, reconstruction. Whether it's reasonable or not, that looks kind of like a nice beam of face. 